here's the preview of what you will achieve by the end of this course. I'm plugging the real-time clock module into a PMOD connector on my FPGA board. Then on my computer I'm running a Python script that I've written which talks to our VHDL I2C controller over UART. And as we can see it reads the time and date from the chip and prints it nicely formatted to the console. I have created a block design. We are not going to use the block design at the end of this course because perhaps you are using a different FPGA vendor and I want to show you how to do it in pure VHDL. But you could add the modules to a block design because the interfaces support the Xilinx XI flow control. The next bus is the command bus and I'm using the XI naming scheme convention here command underscore t data valid ready because then if we drag it into the Vivado block design we can create the block design that I showed you in the previous lesson. Okay so here are our report markers let's see what's going on here. I'm going to zoom in here we can see rx bit number one so we are receiving bit number one after the start condition here's the start condition and then during the first SEL cycle we wait until the falling edge of SEL before sampling and that is correct because then the target has had the most time to set the correct value on SDA and then we sample SDA and then is the top module I have in the top folder a file called top.vhd we also have a test bench and a wrapper for my specific board and an XTC file that is a constraint file for Xilinx for my specific board. I'm going to open the top.bhd file now to look at the entity. So here we see it has an OBUF output buffer tri-state type on the output SCL signal. And the input to this tri-state, as I said before in the previous lesson, is going to be connected to a zero value. So it's connected to ground here. When we activate the tri-state input, this output pin will be floating. Otherwise, if tri-state is not activated, it will reproduce the input here, which is a constant zero, onto the FPGA pin, forcing the FPGA pin down to zero. And we get back zero, zero, because we did the same thing as before, just one go now, instead of two transactions and stopping in between. So we can see the first transaction here, start condition, the bytes, stop condition, and then immediately after, just a short delay, one half a cycle delay, we produce start condition again, and then do the read, and finally a stop condition. So that was one transaction here, and another transaction there. The other option we could use was set, so let's try that, dash dash set. So now it says, Setting today's time and date, sending commands over UART, done, use the read argument to check the results. Let's do that, let's use the read argument. And there we see the time and date and some additional information. Oscillator enabled, external battery enabled, hours format, 12 or 24 hours clock. It's set to zero and that means 24 hour format. And the time and date, more importantly, is this. And that's correct, it's the same as my system date and time right now. And the important part here is that if I disconnect the PMOD module and move it away from the FPGA board and store it until tomorrow without powering it on, it will still retain this time value and it will run the clock continuously so it has a fairly accurate clock and calendar inside of it. And when I connect it to my board again and run read, it's going to read the updated time value.